Six and the interconnectedness is, is very important. Now, this is, um, uh, and, and again, I'm going to stay away from politics, but essentially, as things are coming out of Washington, there's two general tracks. There's the typical, what we're all used to, cut your budget, slash the funding, we're not going to pay for, sorts of uh, initiatives that come out, um, whether it's um, pay for performance or um, we're just not going to pay for things anymore. Um, but then the other track is really a disrupt, a disruption that, that is occurring where, and I'll say this to me feels more like it's coming from the grassroots. It's coming from the providers themselves out looking for ways to deliver care more effectively at a higher quality and at a lower cost. What are we getting for that dollar that we're spending on care? So that's probably the side I'll spend a little bit more time on tonight. Uh, because I think that's the side that is going to impact us um, more directly as, as biomedical professionals. So just a little background, and, and um, again, you probably read a lot about this, you see it on the nightly news, but payment cuts, we're looking at um, through Medicare. Um, the hospitals that we work for and work with, we're looking at billions of dollars not being paid. Basically, what they were paid for yesterday, they won't be paid for tomorrow. Okay, um, How those Market basket is really um, all the things that go into caring for a particular uh, event of care. Those are being recalculated and redetermined and whatnot. Again, it's all about what am I going to pay for? If I'm Washington, what am I going to pay for? And keep in mind that the third parties typically follow what Medicare, Medicaid, CMS approve. Many of the third parties follow suit. Occasionally it's the other way around, but primarily they follow the government. Um, disproportionate share cuts, this is for healthcare institutions that are involved. How many of you work for a teaching institution where you have residents and whatnot? Okay, um, that sort of those costs that are involved with training medical students or nursing students or whatnot, those are considered like this disproportionate share. Those other costs, all of that's being reevaluated. And there's this independent payment advisory board that is supposed to monitor what the impact is on all of these things and make recommendations on where these cuts should occur and whatnot. So all of that is some pretty complicated math um, that's really focused on the financial payment side of healthcare. Now we could say, okay, well I don't really need to worry about that, but at the same time, if your organization is not getting paid for the care it delivers, then that somewhat puts your function at risk, our function at risk, because then it becomes what technologies can we purchase? What technologies can we support? Uh, what direction are we taking? So, so while it seems like it doesn't impact us, it, it does. Maybe it's an arm's length, but it does impact us. Now, on the, um, the more disruptive side, some things that are happening that are uh, throwing many healthcare organizations for a loop uh, are these three big pieces. Um, Value-based purchasing, um, which really ties quality and outcomes to their Medicaid, excuse me, their Medicare payments, um, readmissions. If a patient is readmitted within 30 days for the same reason, for the same cause, they're not going to get paid for it. It's considered a quality issue. Okay. Um, today, the idea is it's really rotate them through. You get paid. If they come back within 30 days, you're still going to you're going to get paid because it's fee for service. Every time you kind of go through the turnstile. And then the third big one, and, and I would suspect many of you have heard about this in your organizations, are the hospital acquired infections. I got sicker when I went to the hospital because I got a bug from something. Whether it was something that wasn't reprocessed correctly, my wound wasn't managed correctly, I uh, wasn't rotated in the bed, so I developed bed sores, which then got infected. All those sorts of things um, are not going to be paid for. We're not, we as a healthcare community, are not going to be allowed to do those sorts of things and expect to get paid for taking care of them. And this is a big change in terms of the culture, if you will, of healthcare. Um, and so I think we, these sort of things are going to try, drive disruptive behaviors in the organization. The way you think nursing behaves today, or the way they operate today, the way the OR operates, all these different radiology, we're going to start seeing changes in terms of their operations because they recognize that they have to adhere to this sort of a culture, these sort of issues, to be able to um, create a sustainable healthcare environment. Okay, and I don't, I don't know 
know that this is truly going to be, um, uh, you know, a, a, a partisan sort of thing. These, I mean, if we put our hat, if we, remember, everybody in this room is also a consumer. And that last one really hits home with me, the, the infection. You know, do I, as a patient, or as my, my daughter goes in, or my mom, or whatnot, I certainly don't want them picking something up in the hospital and just getting worse. So these are sort of cultural issues that we have to, as a, uh, as a, cult, as a community, accept. Okay. ACOs, um, I'll talk a little bit more about those going on um, in a couple of minutes, but um, that essentially, uh, the final rules just came out on that last week. Uh, bundled payment is a very active activity, uh, topic of discussion right now uh, in Washington and in your healthcare organizations. Um, the reason being, and this goes back to some of those, um, like the readmissions in 30 days and, and, the, and the market basket, how we're going to be paid and whatnot. Um, as we move to a model um, like the accountable care organization where um, a, a healthcare organization is responsible for the health of a community, they're going to be paid as a healthcare community. So today's world, the primary doc gets paid, the, all the various specialists get paid, the hospital gets paid, the long-term care center, everybody gets paid individually by the insurance, whether that's Medicare, Medicaid, the blues, whoever, okay? That's, that's in a very simplified version of today's payment model. And as things move forward, the government is going to pay in bundles. That is, this community is responsible for the health of this individual. So the, the diagnosis was such and such. Uh, they had a, a, a heart attack. It was an AMI. And we pay you this much. Now you guys, amongst yourselves, decide how, who gets paid what. Okay. As you might expect, that's a sticky wicket. <laughs> um, it's creating a very different environment. Um, you think um, things are uh, tricky discussions with physicians today. We, it, it, it's no longer us and them. It's going to have to be just us, all on the same team, moving forward. So that's, um, again, um, it seems like it's like, well, Carol, what, how does this affect me? How our organizations get paid impacts whether or not they keep the doors open. Um, and, and even if you work for a nonprofit, this isn't about profit, for profit or not for profit. You have to make enough money to keep the doors open and deliver the mission. So um, these are all very important concepts to be aware of. And these are the things that keep your C-suite up at night. You know, your, your CFO and your CEO and your COO and the CNO and all of those folks. This is the stuff that's keeping them up at night. And that's just sort of a timetable that um, the Premier team put together um, of all the different initiatives, and I'm not sure it's even complete anymore because this is somewhat of a dated slide. All the things that are going on, and, and as you can see, it's not just one, you know, it's not serial. This is very parallel. There's a lot going on all at the same time. So this is really what's driving the stress of, your, of the leadership within your organization and their, their desire to keep their organizations open and running and serving the community. There are organizations closing. There are organizations being purchased and merged and downsized and resized because of all of this activity. So we need to be aware of how that is. And keeping that in mind, how can we as a community be creative and do our part to make our organizations more efficient and effective?